hi everybody in this particular video let us discuss about one of the method of a regular language that is dfa dfa stands for deterministic finite automata the deterministic finite automation as a short dfa is a five-tuple or quintuple indicating five components we can define a dfa as m is equal to q comma summation comma rho comma q naught comma f where q is the number of states summation is the input symbol rho is the transition q naught is the start state and f is the final state now let us see what is the language accepted by now let us see what is the language which is accepted by dfa so it is formally represented as l of m is equals to w such that w belongs to summation star and rho star q naught comma w the transition q naught comma w is in f that is a string w is accepted by the machine m if it takes the machine from the initial state q naught to the final state that is rho star of q naught comma w should be in f this is the language which is accepted by dfa and which is the most important concept now let us see there are various different Techniques to design a DFA. Techniques to design a DFA. The first one is pattern recognition method. Pattern recognition method. The second one is divisible by K method. And the last one is modulo k counter method in this video let us discuss how to design a dfa using a pattern recognition method which is the most important method of designing a dfa even before designing a dfa let us understand why the term dfa came where D stands for deterministic which means there is exactly one transition for every input symbol. There is only one transition for every input symbol. So it is very easy to determine exactly to which state the machine enters into after consuming that input symbol from which state to which state it enters. Next is finite. Now let us try to solve a or to design a DFA using a pattern recognition method. The first problem is draw a DFA to accept the strings of A's and B's having at least one A. These kinds of questions will be asked when a DFA has to be designed. That is, draw a DFA to accept the strings of A's and B's having at least one A. Now, first, let us identify the alphabets. That is, the alphabets summation that is equals to the alphabets that they have given in this question is A comma B. And now, let us identify the minimum string. What is the minimum string? That is the DFA that we designed should have at least one A. This is the minimum string. So now let us identify the possible strings which has at least one A. The possible strings that is a possible strings are it can either have A 
it can have AB, it can have BA, it can have ABB and so on. So these are the possible number of the strings. One major important trick while designing a DFA is that if the minimum string is of only one character, that is if there is only one alphabet in the minimum string, double the number of will be the states. That is if there is only one minimum string in this particular problem. So the number of states will be 1 plus 1 that is 2. So now let us write Q0 as the start state. There is one move to Q1 and let us consider this Q1 as the final state and let us write the minimum string or the condition of this particular DFA that is A. As A input symbol comes onto the state Q0, it moves to the state Q1 by consuming the input symbol A. There is no any restriction saying that the A should be in the beginning or the A should be at the end of the state or A should be at the beginning of the state. So, there is one more input symbol as the deterministic finite automata states that for one particular state, there should be a move for both the input symbols. So, as from Q0, there is a move to Q1 by the input symbol A. So, there is one more input symbol called B. So, let us consider this B on the top of the Q0. That is, when the, when the state Q0 encounters with this input symbol B, it comes to the same state Q0. And what about this Q1? Even there is one state called Q1. And we should show a move for both the inputs for this state. So, let us consider A, B. Wherein, when Q1 encounters an input symbol A, it comes to the same state Q1. The same way, when Q1 encounters the input symbol B, it comes to the same state Q1. So, this is a simple designing of a DFA. This is a simple designing of a DFA which should have at least one A in the DFA. Now, let us write a transition table for this. Let us write a transition now let us write a transition table for the same question that is to accept a string which is having at least one a so row the input symbol a b so which are the number of states that is q naught and q1 when q naught encounters an input symbol a it should go to the state q1 the same way when q naught encounters the input symbol b it should encounter to the same state q naught the same way when Q1 encounters an input symbol A, it should encounter to the same state Q1. When Q1 encounters an input symbol B, it should come to the same state Q1. So this is a very simple example to draw a DFA which accepts a strings of A and B having at least one A. Thank you all. In our next video, let us discuss how to design a DFA with bit complicated kind of a questions. So, in this particular module, we discussed about what is a DFA, what are the rules that we should consider while designing a DFA and the next one is uh, what are the language accepted by DFA and the last one is we solved one simple example to design a DFA. In our next module, let us discuss about bit complicated example of solving a DFA using a pattern recognition method. Thank you.